Hi, it's Matt here from Pilot Practice Exams. So this video is going to deal with the difference between the PIFR, which is the Private Instrument Flight Rating, and the IREX syllabus, just so you know which one to pick. So I've popped the syllabus dot points in here from the Part 61 Manual of Standards, or MOZ as we call it. And here's the two units side by side. So I've got the PIFR, which is the you need a minimum of a PPL to do. And I've got IREX on the right, and so that we can compare. And then what I've done, um, the syllabuses don't perfectly line up in their headings. So I've tried to divide them into headings that will mean things to people so that we could compare them. So as you can see, uh, the PIFR, it doesn't actually mention the privileges, but it would be very unusual for CASA not to ask that question. Um, whereas the IREX does want you to know the privileges. They both want you to know the limitations and you can, I'm not going to read every bullet point to you. You can pause this video and read those. Now the PIFR has a section on fitness and health. The IREX doesn't. Okay, so there's a great section in the back of the uh, VFRG on I'm safe, the acronym I'm safe, and then we've thrown a bunch of other practice exam questions in on those topics as well. The documents, um, they both want you to state or list the documents. And um, this one here, the PIFR, also has, oh, by the way, sorry, red means they're slightly different. Green means they're the same from one to the other, or virtually the same. So they want you to extract the relevant information from operational documents. So in other words, they want you to go looking in the AIP, URSA, perhaps even in approach and departure charts things like that so lighting both sections cover lighting pretty much the same and including pal which is pilot um, activated lighting then we have our radio section now they both cover different points here and you can pause the video and read the difference instruments they're both the same um, instrument errors the pifr has a lot more information on instrument red errors radar and controlled airspace surprisingly um, I guess by the time you get over here to IREX, they figure that your CPL, most people will have done CPL, that you will have covered it. So then they both cover separation, but slightly differently. Um, and you pause it and read the bullet points. The IREX has a section on all the symbols and interpretation of information published on the charts, in particular the en route low charts. Um, and all your routes, sector information, your LSALTs on the charts, etc. We've included some of that in PIFR because it's essential that you know it, but it's not a bullet point in the MOZ. State the requirements for in-flight progress reporting, um, procedures for plot, flight plan amendments, and over there they've got some reporting as well. Now, I, this is where IREX gets a lot harder. They go into the difference between two and three D approaches, and then IREX covers all your three D approaches. Um, IREX also has a section on your know, MDA and your DA, and then they both cover LSAT, and they both cover it reasonably similarly. They've got these two green ones the same, and a couple of different ones in the middle. So, and the PIFR just makes basically wants to make sure that you can really determine LSAT um, very effectively and safely. Whereas over here they're tying it into um, IALs and also you know requirements for establishing uh, yourself on track. You know, describe the aircraft. Uh, requirements to establish the aircraft above the LSAT after takeoff. So they're just going into more detail of LSAT. The IREX has a whole section on how to conduct a missed approach and the missed approach procedures and following them to the exact letter um, of the published procedures. Whereas IFR, you are just required to make sure that you can actually perform some type of missed approach procedure. PIFR has a big section on how you should establish your uh, appropriate cruising level using all of these bullet points here. IREX does not have that. Um, IREX and uh, PIFR both have sections on altimetry. Um, this one's more to do with the temperature variations. Um, this one's more to do with checks and procedures. SAR or search and rescue, and they both have sections on that slightly different this one's just about the obligations. This one's about the um, lodgement. But we've also put in some stuff there on the cancellation of SAR watch as well. In the forecast and weather, you can see that the um, 
IREX has a little section on jet streams, so they're assuming there that you're going to be flying higher up. This section doesn't have jet streams. Um, they have all these green sections in common, you know, your basic MET stuff. Um, so, you know, your frontal weather system, cyclones, dust devils, thunderstorms, etc., fog, turbulence on route. Um, the sources of actions to obtain your forecast for IFR and describe the forecast. But then this one wants you to go into validity periods. Um, stating what MET forecasts are available and demonstrate knowledge of uh, flying conditions likely to be associated. So they're going to give you a GAF or a wind, point, wind temp or a SIGMET or etc. and they're going to ask you to interpret it. Now IREX is also going to go into temperature variations. They, had, they do have some stuff on interpreting MET forecasts. Um, Again, more there. Sources for obtaining web updated weather in flight and obligations for reporting variations. Then IREX has this section on um, sources of altimeter Q and H. And they also have this section here on your MET minima, which is not covered over here in PIFR. Then we go into our NDB section. You can see they've got large sections that are the same. And then um, the PIFRs, Want you to go into these red sections, so night, era, mountainous areas, types of terrain, um, etc. And over here, um, they're talking about signal integrity, and again, they go into some errors, but um, these errors are more related to turning. So then our VOR, VOR, sorry, again, they've got similar sections um, and a few slightly different. So over here, again, they're talking about signal um, integrity instrument indications uh, when the aircraft is a beam so that's for irex um, over here they've got it's pretty similar it's a beam um, they want you to know about your vor radials and determine your off-track distance and calculate your heading to steer to intercept a vor track dme there's nothing in the moz on dme it doesn't mean they won't give you a basic question you know and ask you what it is but they certainly won't go into any detail of it uh, for PIFR, whereas IREX has a good section on those bullet points. For GNSS, or uh, some people call it GPS, which is only one form of GNSS, largely similar, except that IREX has this section here on accuracy, integrity, rain, availability, and continuity of service. Um, but in terms of the functionality and how they work, they're basically the same most of the way through um, this section down here, which I've got to turn red. Uh, and the PIFR goes into um, susceptibility of interference, comparison of vertical and horizontal errors, tracking accuracy. And then IREX goes into all of these here, you know, your 2D navigation, um, GNSS fails, barometric inputs, battery fails, parallel offset, your RNP instrument approach operations for alternates, etc. So then GNSS for IREX also covers these, the, um, your tracking tolerances and your sequencing for all of these bullet points here. Indications requiring a missed approach must be initiated. Um, your broad barrow aiding and um, the effects of satellite unserviceability on the reliability of predictions. So then in the navigation section, you can see that they both want you to know, um, well, this one here probably should be green. They both want you to know the requirements. Um, they want you to know, both want you to know the tolerances um, and your position fixing. Um, requirements as well and for the avoidance of CTA but the rest of it is slightly different so you can see IREX is going to go into a lot more different uh, differences there they're going to go into the speed limitations during holding procedures approach procedures um, the requirements can, to conduct visual circling at day and night they're going to go into more detail on position approach fixes and, and um, final approach fixes there's a lot of variation here in the route section, completely different. Um, over here on the IREX, they just want you to be able to plan a route and know its limitations. For PIFR, they want you to um, go into all these details in, in regard to routes, um, you know, your forecast, your PRDs, control airspace, route limitations, your engine out performance for multi-engine, airway operations, etc. all of those bullet points. And then um, PIFR also has this section on proceed or not, which IREX doesn't touch on at all. Now in regard to your alternate requirements, all of the information that you need to study for PIFR is in the IREX, 
but then they have all these set red sections as well. Um, so there's a lot more information on your alternate requirements under IREX than there is in uh, PIFR. So over here, you're going to have to go into navigation, um, the aerodrome lighting requirements, diversion times, um, your night VFR operations, pilot recency, alternate requirements, alternate clearance requirements, all of these to do with alternates, of course. Um, the implications of rain, the requirements of the weather conditions, etc. Then when we get down to planning, there's a section in IREX on planning. Um, route limitations again. So you'll see some of this is a little bit of a duplication from further up. Um, your tables of cruising altitude, which you should be familiar with from PPL anyway and know where to find those in the AIP. Um, then there's a section in both on the transponders, which is the same. Uh, IREC, sorry, PIFR has this big section on outside of controlled airspace. That's not covered in, um, in your IREX. They've got a section on visual approach procedures and they've got a section on radio and abnormal procedures, which is not covered in IREX. Now, a lot of the human factors are identical between IREX and, uh, and a PIFR, but then PIFR has these additional red ones to do with your SIDS, your stars, your noise abatement and your holding patterns. And also, I think there's uh, a bit here on the vestibular. Oh no, they both got vestibular, so that should be green and um, that one is a red one. So then as we continue on with IREX, there's a big section on PBNs, which is not in PIFR, performance-based navigation. There's a big section on your RMPs, which again is not covered in, in uh, uh, your PIFR. And there's a big section on your reduced vertical separation minima, which is not covered in PIFR. So hopefully that's helped you with your, uh, you know, working out which one you want to do and knowing a little bit about what's different in each of them. Don't forget, you can skip through that video and pause the relevant sections. Um, it's probably well advised for you to print out and highlight those in red and green for the particular syllabus you choose. When you come here to do your practice exams, there's PIFR there, there's IREX there. There's our join page if you want to join up on the home page. They're actually further down the page. So you've got IREX here and PIFR down the bottom. So I'm Matt from Pilot Practice Exams and hopefully that's helped you. So don't forget to give us a uh, like and a subscribe if you like this. If you subscribe, you'll get releases of all these new types of videos and you can just make a quick decision whether it's uh, relevant to you or not. So your best bet is to subscribe. When CASA puts out any big changes, we generally put out a YouTube video about it. So that's the absolute best way to find out what's going on or make sure you don't miss a trick while you're going through your exams.